Uh, but I think long term, if they allow these players to continue doing this nonsense on the field, they are going to lose viewership. They are going to uh, they're going to lose the fans in the stands who are paying the bills, and ultimately they're not going to continue doing this, or people are not going to be coming to the game. And the people that are, they don't really care much about it. It's not going to pay the bills. Uh, there has to be people that say, look, enough is enough. Uh, try to channel that energy and effort into initiatives that actually have some teeth on it. Something that works in the community. If you really want to help people get out of the community, start organizations, run for, for office you know, at the lowest level and rise up to make that change instead of just sitting there with lip service and talking about it, do something about it. Um, it's amazing you can just do that in an action and say, okay, you know, there's something wrong about it, and everybody says there's something wrong about it, but nobody's taking anything into their hands other than kneeling, and that's pissing people off and angering people. Did it, did it call attention to it? We we see the news reports. We see we see when people or injustices are done and they're they're brought. People should go to the courthouse. They sh- they should get involved with protest and things like that peacefully. But not to take our flag. It's like taking God's name in vain by doing it. That's that's how much it hurts a veteran. That's how. Ask a veteran. Ask somebody that's served in the military, ask somebody that's lost somebody in the military, ask anybody practically that's been in the military, they will tell you how disrespected they feel in itself. You talk about people in the 1960s or the 70s, they came back from Vietnam and they were spit on when they came back. That's how they feel. Maybe it's more the old timers, but uh, anybody that I've, I've, 30s and 40s, maybe 50s, uh, they're pissed off about it, so it's not just the young twenty-year-olds and millennials. It's it's not just them. It's most people. Anyways, we'll we'll stay tuned for that. Uber has got this idea: flying taxis, and NASA's kind of thinking maybe you're onto something. Uber is working with NASA specifically on flying taxis, uh, a project that they're working on right now as we speak, and they could be hovering around Los Angeles by 2020. I am serious, a couple years from now. And so far, though, everything still seems to be on the drawing board. But the project was revealed at the Web Web Summit in Lisbon, Portugal, on uh, Wednesday, which would be, as a matter of fact, yesterday, where Jeff Holden, he's the Uber head of the uh, product, it's in such a project... Has NASA very interested in this? Um, with NASA with it propelling uh, Uber Elevate initiative forward, Holden also announced that Los Angeles has been added to the list of test cities with Dallas, Fort Worth, along with Dubai. I mean, these are very uh, super populated areas. Um, you got to admit, rush hour is just terrible. Uh, in those uh, those cities, you'd have to admit, terrible. Have you been stuck in traffic in the Beltway in D.C.? Any city, it's just terrible. Tampa's gotten a lot worse. I do the show from Tampa, Florida. It, the traffic has quadrupled. Well, the population has since I moved here in 2001. A whole lot worse. CNBC reported Holden as saying Uber Air would be steering flights on a daily basis. Doing this safely and effectively is going to require a foundational change in airspace management technologies, he said. Um, Combining Uber software engineering expertise with NASA's decades of airspace experience to tackle this is a critical step towards the Uber Elevate. That's what they're calling it, Uber Elevate. You can look it up and query it and uh, read more about it, maybe see some mock-ups on what these things would actually look like. But Uber first revealed its plan to introduce its ride-sharing to the skies last year, but the uh, Verge noted still faces major obstacles, and most notably the aircraft and the uh, supporting infrastructure envisioned by the company does not exist yet. But despite this, Holden has insisted that there has been growth in the project, and there's been a great deal of progress that's been hard to see 
from the outside because a lot of this is just hard work at the drafting table, he said, per The Verge, and we really feel good. It's been a really interesting process getting our vehicle manufacturing partners aligned on performance specifications. So uh, they're building vehicles that align uh, with uh, this Elevate project on the drawing board, but possibly coming to Los Angeles soon, as early as 2020. Uh, anybody watch the Jetsons? Yeah, uh, flying vehicles. Uh, they already have cars that you can buy. And uh, I don't know how safe they are. I don't know how soon I would be actually. Well, the self-driving thing uh, hasn't been catching on over here, and I don't think I'm going to be stepping into one of those anytime soon. I'm kind of weirded about uh, weirded out about the vehicles that park for you when you can't parallel park. And I know that's a godsend for some of you, just for the life of you, can't do that. And, and you may have bought the vehicle that can already do that. I mean, that's a luxury item for sure. Uh, or the ones that will just automatically break itself if it doesn't think that you're going to stop in time to avoid a collision. That's kind of cool. Those technologies are pretty neat. Uh, I just wonder how many Americans are going to step in and have that first Uber ride on the highway. Hmm. Would it be you? Yeah. Uh, Uber, I, I've taken Uber to the airport uh, a couple times. I've had some good experiences. Yeah, you can have Uber X, which is like nicer. Then there's this, just the run-of-the-mill Uber. But I've had nothing but good experiences myself with Uber. And these people, man, delivering food, delivering people. And if they can do it faster, they will. But I got, you got to hand it to them. These companies, man, are really innovating. And, you know, SpaceX working with NASA, Uber working with NASA. I mean, partnering with those that have major experience in these things with logistics. To me, it only makes sense. And it puts engineers to work because they're certainly not building more shuttles. Uh, for the life of me, I still frustrates me that we don't see these things go. They were beautiful. They were beautiful. They worked. Uh, you see these just stick rockets, and it always baffles me. They say they're the launching, like, multiple satellites from these rockets, and I'm thinking, how in the hell does those uh, those satellites fit in that thing? Because, it, 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 you know, you're not right up on it. You see it on, <laughs> you see it on television. Uh, they must collapse the stuff. They like, you know, the capsule like blows up and then it just, you know, it must be collapsible because it, it, to me, I don't understand. There must be some kind of logistics going on there uh, to be able to get that thing working and doing what it's supposed to do. Is it collapsible? That's something that I need to check out. Maybe you check out. And if you work for NASA, send me an email at forthepeopleshow.com. Or if you just play a, a, a NASA employee and you know something, email me too. Let me know what you think. How do those satellites fit on those rockets? And would you ride in one of these hovering Uber cars that might be coming in 2020 to Los Angeles? We'll be back with more For the People right after this. It's done like anything. It's done like anything you've ever been through in your life, man. I was driving. This uh, kid threw a grenade at us. It went right over our vehicle. It was 12 years old. The shock wave went through my head, rattled up my brain, and left. Danger is around you 360 degrees at all times, and you can't unlearn that. It's impossible to describe the sacrifices these men and women have made to protect our freedoms. And the job of rebuilding their lives is massive and growing every day. Many will need the programs offered by the Wounded Warrior Project for years to come. I didn't know what PTSD was. All I knew is I was having nightmares. And when I got released, my reintegration was, go check in at the VA, man. My first coping mechanism was use drugs. Just numb it. Don't feel anything. I was angry. I'm trying to pull myself out of that right now. Your gift today of $19 per month will honor and empower these veterans so they can aid and assist each other. 
The Wounded Warrior Project is a life raft. I can say this without question that I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for it. The Wounded Warrior Project is, is the first step getting back out into the world and reforming yourself outside of the service. Call or go online with a pledge of $19 a month. You'll receive this Wounded Warrior Project blanket and your gift will provide critically needed programs that rebuild lives. That was my first feeling of actually being a part of something bigger than myself again. Well, I lost a few really close friends overseas, and if I quit, I'm going to let them down, and I'm not about to do that. I'm learning to face my fears head on. To trust and see what happens at the end. It's a long process, but I had to drive and desire. Please, call or go online with your gift right now. For the people is there. Your American heritage. Down the road they came, three full companies of British grenadiers. The jingle of harness, the rattling of equipment, scarlet coats, towering Shaco hats, glittering, winking brass insignia. Young Major Pitcairn shouted to the colonists, throw down your arms and disperse. American Captain John Parker's sturdy voice said, don't fire unless fired upon, but if they want to have a war, let it begin here. Sheets of flame, roaring muskets, the awful conflict started on the village green in Lexington and would wend its bloody trail all the way to Yorktown. This has been Don Keyes examining an old daguerreotype depicting a part of your American heritage. Enjoy your American heritage Monday through Friday right here on this station. Brought to you by For the People. With all the choices out there to enjoy some entertainment, wouldn't it just be nice to have something that didn't cost an arm or a leg? I found something that does just that. It's called 123 Ready TV. It's one of the most remarkable apps available to start watching all of those movies and TV shows for one incredible price, just $19.99. And that's a one-time only price. Recap, all your movies, current and classic, and sports and news, and so much more. So cut the cable and stop spending money at the movies when you can truly have it all at your fingertips. No commercials, just all the entertainment you desire. 123 Ready TV is available for Windows and all Android devices. Get your 123 Ready TV for just $19.99 at ForThePeopleShow.com. That's ForThePeopleShow.com. Just click on the store page to get yours now and start enjoying entertainment the way it was supposed to be. Fun. For the People has a special opportunity for you. If you own a business and want to gain a national audience that is loyal and will do business with you, imagine being able to get your product and or service into the hands of tens of thousands of people each week. Sponsorship opportunities are now available at rates you can afford. Finally, the show you love with your business supporting what we do in partnership. Start running your commercials today. To contact us, go to ForThePeopleShow.com. That's ForThePeopleShow.com. Introducing the official For the People coffee mug featuring the colorful red, white, and blue For the People logo with Keith Allen on a ceramic 11-ounce coffee mug, perfect for any hot beverage of your choice. This mug is a great reminder of what we stand for, God, country, and family, with conservative values and good old-fashioned common sense. To order your For the People coffee mug, pay just $20 plus $3.99 shipping and handling at ForThePeopleShow.com. That's ForThePeopleShow.com. And enjoy. On radio stations coast to coast, we are for the people, and I'm your host, Keith Allen. By the way, if you like the show, you're our best form of advertising. Wherever you might be listening, tell people about the radio station that you're tuned into. Share it, the frequency, where they can specifically find it. And if you're listening to it online, let them know, forthepeopleshow.com. Really appreciate that. All right, Rand Paul. Uh, you know, this good senator from Kentucky, still kind of just wondering what the hell happened. Uh, his neighbor came up behind him and assaulted him, and six ribs have been broken. Uh, not a good thing. Six broken ribs and uh, an infusion, which is a plural infusion, which is uh, excess fluid around the lungs. And, you know, the injuries pretty much have sidelined Paul from the Senate. 
as he's been recovering from his house. But it's an honor.